Well, verses 5 through 10 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, we give thanks to God always for all of you, making mention of you in our prayers, of you as at italics. It's actually inserted for a better understanding. It's implied. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor and love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father, having known, beloved brethren, your election by God, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance, as you know, what kind of men we are were among you for your sake. I look at that. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. I learned that much later, from age 17. Now I'm nearly 80. So I look back at that. Yeah, the power was there. I just wasn't aware of it. You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believed. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth for you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. What a commendation. For they themselves report about us what kind of reception we had with you and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. We're not going to be there. Tribulation period points to the rapture before the tribulation begins. So keeping in view the context of 1 Thessalonians 1, 2-4, to especially relative to God's election in verse 4, who God, which his election resulted in verse 3, in the Thessalonian believers' work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father. He's always there. Paul writes us as follows in verses 5 through 10. In 1 Thessalonians 5 through 6, Paul reports that the believers in Thessalonica became imitators of Paul, Silas, and Timothy. Not only did Paul and his traveling companions preach a convincing message that the believers readily received by the grace and election of God, but they also lived lives consistent with that message, emulating the lives of their teachers, Paul, Silas, and Timothy. But then the Thessalonian believers became imitators of the Lord himself, having received the word, teachings from God's word, through the three missionaries, Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they were subjected to much tribulation, yet they reacted to it with joy through the working within them of God the Holy Spirit. For it is with the Spirit within them who prompted and enabled them to express godly faith and behavior, who prompted their joyous reception which accompanied their positive acceptance of God's message and their endeavor to imitate Paul, Silas, and Timothy, and most importantly, moving on, endeavoring to imitate the Lord himself. Talk about the work of the Holy Spirit. This is corroborated by 2 Timothy, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 3 to 5. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 to 5, where it is indicated that God, Paul thanked God for the Thessalonian believers' positive response to Paul's, Simon's, Silas's, and Timothy's teaching for their faith and faithfulness, their perseverance and joy while under severe tribulation as they share their faith throughout the region and their love for one another. So one may conclude that the progress that these remarkable believers made was all by their enablement through the grace of God, albeit through the volition of the believers themselves. God thanks them both. God the Father, he thanks God for this progress, and the, the believers in Thessalonica for following through in their faithfulness. But that was their positive volition to do that, but God gets all the credit. Then in 1 Thessalonians 1, 7, it indicates that as a result of what God, by his grace, was working within the believers of Thessalonica, Paul stipulated that the Thessalonian believers became examples to all the believers in the rest of Macedonia and Achaia, the neighboring province to the south and everywhere in the surrounding regions, even throughout the world through the dissemination of the New Testament Greek Bible. Whereupon 1 Thessalonians 1, 8 to 10 further elaborates upon the Thessalonians' godly influence around the region as follows. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith toward God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. 
this no need to say anything in the sense that the faithfulness of the believers in Thessalonica spoke for itself, not requiring anyone to commend and speak of them as examples to others. For the Thessalonian believers themselves sounded out the gospel to others. They were commendably outspoken in their witness, multiplying the voices presenting the gospel to others everywhere in the surrounding regions. And as they boldly presented to the gospel, they exemplified to all that they had experienced salvation through their faithfulness to the gospel in their personal lives, all the while persevering through persecution. Wow. For they themselves, all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia, and everywhere else in the region, report about us, Paul, Silas, Timothy, what kind of reception we had with you, in the sense that the believers in Macedonia and Achaia, Achaia and everywhere else have reported about the great response, reception, and acceptance of the teachings of Paul, Silas, and Timothy. They just kept passing it on. And now they turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. They actually saw this service so readily and so quickly done. What are we sitting down on our backsides? Get moving forward. In the sense of how the, the believers in Thessalonica responded to the teaching which they received so remarkably well, and so that they evidently quickly turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God. They didn't wait. They just moved on. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. In the sense of the believers at Thessalonica, waiting for God's son, Jesus Christ, to come from heaven to the clouds above the earth to rescue the Thessalonian believers and all believers in Christ throughout the church age, catching them up to the clouds and bringing them all back to heaven with himself. They knew that back in the first century. Now we have a question about it now, with the scriptures already written, and the other parts, like in, in Second Thessalonians in chapter uh, 4 or 1st, uh, corroborating this. They knew it. They didn't have to. They, they got it, and they moved on. Both dead in Christ, to be taken away from the wrath of God just before that wrath will come upon the earth, to be directed toward all of unbelieving mankind. We have First Thessalonians 4. And we believers in the church age will be with the Lord forever. 